I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today is all about yellow speckles. I know, I know, yellow speckles? Isn't that something you said is hard or hard to see? Well, it does work. I have achieved yellow, not super sharp speckles, but things that would knit up as yellow specks on both white yarn and a bare yarn that is not white. And so that really got me thinking about what we can and cannot achieve. And I want to try to get some yellow speckles on a very pastel yellow base and to see if that will show up or not. It might just look tonal, but we're gonna give this a shot. Today we are gonna dye 300 grams of Nomad's Snowdrift. This yarn is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, and I do have a review and first impressions of a bunch of Nomad's yarn lines on my channel. But now I'm gonna go pre-soak this yarn. I'm hoping to play with our different tones of yellow here. So I'm thinking that we'll start with a super pastel fluorescent lemon base and then try to do some brilliant yellow speckles on top of it. There is contrast between the two colors as we speckle. Uh, and so I'm hoping that having the slightly different tone, having the cooler toned yellow base and the warmer toned as we attempt the speckle, so I, I'm hoping that that will work. But I do need to make sure I do um, pastel enough for the first base. I did add on my removable nylon zip ties. They, these did start out as white, but they do kind of absorb color as time goes on. And I don't care about it being perfectly pre-soaked. I do need to add some more water to this. You can see how uh, when the yarn is above the surface, that just means that you should add more water to the pre-soak. There we go. I do want things to be pretty well saturated so that way the first yellow layer is somewhat even. Or we could dip dye. Ooh, that's not a bad idea. We could dip dye so there's like a variation in tone. We'll see, it'll be tonal. We'll, we'll see how things go. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna let this yarn pre-soak for 30 minutes. I was gonna wing it and then I remembered I have a Neon Depths of Shade video. And so I can refer to that to pick the depth of the fluorescent lemon dye that I want. And I decided to aim for the 0.0625% depth of shade, which gives a nice pastel. And so this would be 6.25 milliliters of our 1% stock solution for 100 grams of yarn. But since we are gonna dye 300 grams of yarn, uh, we would need 18.75 milliliters. And so I decided to go for just 20 milliliters to have it be a nice even number, but also because I would have been willing to go up to the 0.125% depth of shade and this won't bring it that deep. And so it's just a nice round number, but I know that this will bring me in the ballpark of the color I want because I had played around with the depth of shade. Even though it was a different yarn base, which has a similar fiber content, things should be very, very similar on the Snowdrift as it was on the Wool to Die For Platinum. Just shaking up my stock. With my graduated cylinder, I could absolutely measure out uh, 19 milliliters, but the 20 is also just easier. <laughs> and so sometimes you wanna be really precise with your measurements and other times when it doesn't matter a ton, and I might even be at like 20.5 milliliters. Uh, no, actually, the uh, it's 20. Since I'm not trying to match a color specifically, I just wanna make sure it's not too intense. Uh, we are well within a range that is fine. So sometimes it's worth doing the math to make sure you're in the right ballpark. And I'm glad that I just double checked. In this eight quart pot, which could end up being a little too crowded, I have 24 cups of water, no acid yet, and it's not that hot yet, so I, yeah, it's actually just lukewarm. So I am going to dip the graduated cylinder directly in to rinse it out. 
The yarn has only pre-soaked for 20 minutes, but I think I want to go ahead and add it now. So I'm going to squeeze out a bit of the water and we have no acid in our pot yet. So the reason for removing a lot of the pre-soak water is so that way the yarn, ooh, that's a very pretty soft yellow, will soak up the color here really, really nicely. If we had more water in the yarn already, then uh, it would just mean that the dye wouldn't really soak up as much like a sponge. And I am okay if we see some tonal variation in here, but I do want it to be mostly yellow all over, and I think we're gonna achieve that without any problem. But now that we know we're gonna have a little bit of yellow all over, I'm gonna go ahead and add some acid. So let's see, I think I'm gonna do six tablespoons of white vinegar, and then to stir that up, we are still not hot at all, just a little bit warm. I'm gonna raise and lower the yarn in the pot, and now we're gonna go ahead and heat for I will say I'll check back in in 30 minutes. It'll take a while to heat up, but uh, ultimately once all the color is absorbed, um, if that happened in two minutes, that would be okay. We will be applying more heat as we speckle. It has been 30 minutes and we are warming up. And I would say that most of the color is in the yarn. There's a tiny bit of yellow left in here, but I think I want to use the water here, even with the tiniest hint of color left, as the dye bath when we do the speckling. We'll probably add more acid for the speckles as well, but we may as well reuse the water. So I'm going to turn off the heat here. I don't think this is even that hot yet, and we're going to get set up to speckle. I'm here with my catering steam pan. And I'm gonna bring in our 300 grams of yellow yarn. And what's funny is looking at the pictures that I had used before with the depths of shade, this is feeling uh, not that, I mean, I get, fine, on camera it looks pastel. In person, I feel some of the neon here. <laughs> So I'm optimistic. I'm optimistic that we will be able to see some yellow on yellow speckling. Uh, well, I'm hopeful. Okay, I'm adding in some water and I totally added too much. I wanted to have enough so that the yarn would be at the surface, but you know, this is when, when you pour water in, sometimes you do too much. So. I am going to slowly remove some water. This is a little bit easier than pouring to get the water out. Uh, I am so sorry about the landscaping noises outside, by the way. I tried waiting for them to be done, but it's been hours and they are still working on my neighbor's lawn. So anyway, once I get the water level, to something more where I would like it, uh, I will hop back in. Okay, much better. We still now have a lot of yarn that is at the surface, but if we move it to the side, we still see some water over there. I do think I'm gonna add a little bit more acid just so that way things strike quickly. And I checked, there are seven leaf blowers next door. <laughs> I could see them right outside my kitchen window. Uh, I think it is spring cleanup time. I'm not sure when this video will come out, uh, but probably in, in the summer. Um, but uh, now I'm gonna turn on the heat. Things are warm, but I wanna get it nice and hot uh, so we can speckle. And I will just be speckling with the dry dye powder, Brilliant Yellow from Dharma Training Company. I could mix it in with citric acid, but I want to be able to have some patches that are a little bit more intense. And so that's why I'm gonna go for bigger speckles with the dry powder. But whenever I am interacting with the dry powder, I will be wearing my deluxe rubber respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves. And so I will also sound a bit more muffled. Okay, I'm gonna reduce the heat to low. Make sure my fingers are completely dry. And that is so I don't introduce any uh, moisture into this container if I can help it. 
And now I'm picking up a pinch of powder, but when I'm gonna speckle, I like to brush most of it off and have just like a tiny amount of dye in between my fingertips. And then I am slowly rubbing my fingers together to let the dye fall onto the yarn. And for all we see like bits of powder on here, I think you can barely see it on camera. I will zoom in once I finish up this side. Uh, but the color will spread some, that's sort of what this color does. But it's showing up. And so that is awesome. I'm not going for all over, all over, but I am, I mean, I guess I'm all over, but a little bit spread out is sort of what I'm going for. And I will be collecting the color that's on my fingertips for a week as I'm behind later on. But now I will go rinse off my hands and then zoom in. Okay, the colors are definitely not showing up accurately on camera right now. But we do have some little specks, but most of the area where I added the dye, even if I can see tiny little specks in here, it does look a little bit more spread out, just because that's sort of what the color does. When you have a lot of specks, it's just not very intense. Okay, this might be a little bit more accurate to the color that I'm seeing. And over here, initially there were a lot of little dots, but uh, the brilliant yellow does spread out after we've added it. Now, the way that this may knit is that we'll have some stitches in the paler yellow, and then maybe like a stitch or two in the deeper yellow. So it will have sort of like a speckly effect and be a little bit random on the yarn. It's just, you know, the not quite as sharp. Ooh, here's an area. Sort of in here, I was able to get it a little bit more spread out, so it feels a little bit more speckly, but there's not a lot of contrast. Um, so it's not very obvious. Uh, and yeah, it is working though. I reduced the heat and set a timer for 10 minutes. And then we will come back and flip the yarn to dye the other side. I'm about to flip, but I did notice that I got some powder on this zip tie, and since I don't want it to spread a lot, I'm just gonna wipe it off uh, before I flip. Okay, and so I'm gonna take this and flippity flop the yarn. You have to remember, I don't want to get, like, I want coverage, but I don't want like too much coverage. And so I'll have to keep that in mind as we go. But as I flip, I'm now going to come and sort of spread things out a little bit. So that way, hopefully we get more than just like one layer, you know, that way it exposes a little bit beneath. Uh, yeah, so now I'm gonna put my mask back on and we're gonna speckle. I decided to continue speckling with the, my fingertips and the dry powder. With other colors, I am able to see some sharp speckles, maybe with a little bit of spread around them, but mostly some sharp speckles using this kind of technique. Now, we could absolutely mix the Brilliant Yellow dye with some citric acid to spread it out more and try to separate it more, but I think that it, with an immersion technique, having that citric acid mixed with the color, I think that it would spread, the colors would still spread out a bit and I think there would be less contrast than what we're seeing here. When ultimately we have pretty low contrast for this yellow on yellow already. And it's working because we have a cool toned yellow base and a warm toned yellow speckle. And so I want to lean in to what I've started here. However, if you would like to see me try this with citric acid, please let me know in the comments below because I am always open to trying more variations on a theme. 
But anyway, I waited 10 minutes between the flips of this yarn until I was satisfied with the amount of color that we had. Okay, I was almost satisfied after the last round, or before the last round. So, uh, yeah, I'm not even going to check. I just added a lot of the water that we had used originally. So that way things are nice and submerged. And now I am going to let things heat for, uh, I guess 30 minutes since I cooled it off a little bit to add all that water. Um, yeah, and then we'll be back. It's been 30 minutes and I'm going to turn off the heat. And we're now going to remove the yarn from the pot. And it is really, really subtle and steamy. Um, so I'm going to set the yarn aside to cool and once it's cool then we can wash it. But yeah, right there, it's it's hard to see. <laughs> Let's wash our yarn. You can see those speckles. They are there. It's just super subtle. Like if I'm moving it you barely see it. It's going to feel more tonal. Maybe it'll feel a little speckly. But this is even more subtle than the than the pink one I did with the pink with super subtle speckles. Um, let's add. We're using up the last of a soap bottle here. Let's see. I'm not seeing any color come out, which is always good. I haven't speckled on snowdrift before, I'm just realizing, um, but I, it did pretty well. Nona did say they're coming out with a softer, soft one with some higher quality merino, so I'd be excited to try that at some point if you all are interested. But let's see. Yeah, the color is good, so I'm going to finish rinsing out the soap, put this through my spin dryer, and hang up the yarn to dry. Well, here we have bright yellow yarn with yellow speckles. And I think the camera is picking up the yellow on yellow a little bit, but it is so, so subtle that for a while before I had the like lights on in here, I was like, man, did that just really blend together? Like, let me see. Yeah, just under like warmer lights, it's super hard to feel the difference. But they are present. In some areas, the speckles are more splotched, but in other areas, like through here, you can see those little brilliant yellow pops on our fluorescent lemon backdrop. And so it did technically work. And here's another area where you can see a lot of the individual, uh, a lot of the individual small speckles. The problem is just there is not very much contrast at all. And so I think that the yellow speckles would be a little bit more successful if we had a pastel gray base. Uh, sort of like we saw on the That Yak, which actually, let me grab some of that. Here are a few different yarn bases, and while we aren't seeing tiny, like, dot pinpricks, we actually have a little, a few more dots on the yarn we dyed today. But on the gray base, you can see a huge difference between the Brilliant Yellow and the Fluorescent Lemon. And you can feel the difference between those colors in here as well. So while these aren't, like, sharp, fine speckles. When knit up, some of these patches will only be like one stitch, so you'll get that sort of speckly feel once it is knit or crocheted or however worked up. It's just that you need to have some contrast between your speckle color and what it's on top of to feel speckled versus feeling just a little bit tonal. And so to me, this yarn almost feels a little bit more tonal yellow. I mean, it is still speckled. You can see a bit of contrast, but it's very, very subtle. And so unlike when we did the pink on pink speckles, where the colorway was subtle, but you did see the specks there, 
Here, this is even more subtle, and we use two different colors to try to increase the contrast. I could have mixed our acid dyes in with some citric acid powder, and that's something that maybe would have given us some good success. However, when you do that and dilute the dye, sometimes you de-intensify the color you could get versus if you use the dry powder where you had more pigment in one spot. And so I would be willing to try that, to try with, and maybe we would reduce our fluorescent lemon depth of shade a little further um, to make that even lighter, but we could use that and then do brilliant yellow uh, mixed with citric acid to try to get m smaller little specks on it. And so if that's something you would like to see, let me know in the comments below, but I think that it would make more sense to move on to something that is less yellow to start with, to then try to do the yellow speckles on top of that and play around with that more. Now, all that being said, this is a very fun yarn, a very fun yellow colorway. It will have some dimension to it. This would stand up really well with complex stitch patterns, something where sometimes speckled yarn can have be a little too busy and could distract from lace or cables. And this I don't think would distract from it at all. So I think this would be great as a canvas for a variety of types of projects. One other variable I should mention is that I was using Nomad Snowdrift today instead of say Knitpix Stroll, which is the 75-25 sock yarn I use the most. And I don't think that that made any difference in what we see. I think the difference in contrast is really just based on the pigments and how those pigments behave versus the yarn base. Um, and again, if you want to see my review of Nomad Yarn, I will link to that video in the description and it will be also be up in the iCard, which is a little symbol at the top right hand corner of the video. I had to zoom in on the speckles one more time. I mean, they are there and I really hope the camera is picking it up. Uh, I think that I feel the contrast between the colors a little bit more now that the yarn is twisted up than I did while flat. Oh, hair. A hair more. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I really do listen to your comments and suggestions and try to incorporate those ideas into my videos. There might be times where something is asked or suggested and I say I don't think that'll be super successful but ultimately I am willing to try and I think that this colorway is while well subtle really really fun and I'm really glad that I tried this using two different tones of yellow because I think that gave us the biggest opportunity for success, which I knew because I tried speckling with both of these yellows onto some other yarn and saw the contrast there. So therefore I hoped that we would have success today. Now, I'm not, I don't want to encourage you to spam the comments, but if there are things you would like to see me try, please suggest it, even if you think someone else may have suggested it before, because the more I see a question, uh, even if it's something that I'm unsure about how it would turn out, the more likely I am to put it higher up in my queue of things I want to film. And I am so glad that I filmed this today. Please, please, please subscribe, turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. So we could try yellow speckles on gray. Uh, we could try something, I mean, I, I wouldn't really try yellow speckles on top of something super red, because if the base is already really pigmented, then it wouldn't really make a huge impact. If you look at any of my color mixing videos, usually you need a lot more, a lot higher percentage of the yellow than either a blue or red or blue and pink to shift colors more green or orange and away from the other primaries. And so, yeah, it's it would be harder to get the like speckle to pop if the base color is a little bit more pigmented. But if we started with say a paler blue base or the gray, I think that the yellow could add that warmth to it. It might not look yellow, it might then look more green, but I think that that would maybe have more, like add more warmth and so there would be more contrast and it might show up a little bit more. 
But anyway, I, I should probably just think about this more. But clearly, uh, I, <laughs> but clearly, editing Rebecca is writing down all of these ideas. And so I have a feeling that these may be things that I will be working on soon. Thank you so much for watching.